Uh, next thing that we have is Jim Carrey returns as Dr. Robotnik in Sonic the Hedgehog 3 film. Uh, any thoughts on that, Daniela? I think it's funny that he kind of said he was retiring and then it was confirmed he's going to be in Sonic the Hedgehog 3. But he does such a great job at being Dr. Robotnik. It's definitely like a character that is up Jim Carrey's alley. And I mean, I'm sure there's other actors that could be a pretty good Robotnik, but I, I really think Jim Carrey was, you know, this is one of his characters. Yeah, I don't want to see anyone else play Dr. Robotnik. And I do agree that there are certain characters that should be reserved for certain actors. And maybe that's, I don't know, that could be debatable or not. But who do you see playing Dr. Robotnik after Jim Carrey? I, I don't know. But someone will come along, right? And show us that, you know, of course, they are qualified to, to do that. But in terms of uh, comic relief and and just... Uh, the the energy that we want to see from a character like Dr. Robotnik, even when you look at the cartoon and how uh, Jim Carrey does that so well, it's just like, I don't want anyone else to do it. But at some point, as you mentioned, people retire. And when they do, you know, maybe we'll see someone else, um, you know, take take the role. Wolverine, Hugh Jackman, like, do we see anyone else? But there are actors that could bring some type of new flavor to it. Like, I think... The only other actor that I think might also make a good Robotnik is Jack Black. He's a very right. energetic, charismatic character and comedian. Right. I think whatever version he brought of Robotnik, I think we would have loved to. Yeah, I agree with that. I do agree with that. So so Jack Black would be would be next if uh, Jim Carrey steps down. I think that'd be good. I think that'd be really I good. Think it would be. Yeah, uh, 100%. So so with, with that, uh, I, I know last episode we were talking about Sonic and we were talking about Sonic X Shadow Generation and you were like, ah, do we but need? That's the, theme, the movie, I love the movie. <laughs> right. I don't know. I have a certain, I have a certain way now after watching the Last of Us documentary about how we use the internet to like bully people because the, the studio was bullied into changing what Sonic looked like and right. that worked out. That, that worked, worked out. out. That worked but out. Like, I don't think we should bully people. Right. <laughs> like, but, what am I saying? But what's interesting about that is so, okay, we have to be careful how we tread this line, right? So a whole bunch of individuals share their disappointment with a character model, which is one of the greatest characters that we've ever seen. Of course, he is the fastest thing alive. He's faster than Mario. He, that's not debatable. Okay. And because of that, we see this character, we're like, this is not how Sonic looks. And if we didn't get that Sonic, would we have seen a second film or a third? Because that would have, go ahead. No, we would not have. I, I don't think so. I think if they kept the original model of Sonic, I don't think visually people could get past it. I I just don't. I mean... It was great that they did end up changing it and listening to all the complaints online and it worked out for them. But I have a whole other different type of respect now for all these gangs jumping on it. Like, yeah, there are some people who were pretty respectful about their unhappiness, voicing their opinions like, oh, that is not my Sonic or that's not what Sonic looks like. And then you have some people who are really super aggressive about it. Not down for that at all. But if you get it collectively, on you know whatever range that you were on that disappointment yeah i don't know how i feel about that anymore now yeah it's pretty crazy right so so complaints is one thing threats is another and we both know that we've seen different versions of that throughout the years uh, i think that if you do constructive criticism to a particular company that you love the stuff that they're doing that they will respond and sometimes they won't we saw that with anthem they did not respond. Anthem might be a thing again, maybe in the future. But if they responded to what the people were saying constructively to make the game better, we probably would still have Anthem. Now, hopefully we talk about Battlefield, right? Hopefully they can get that right because we have a game like the finals from X Battlefield devs. This game seems like it came out of nowhere and it's doing amazing, right? So I think that constructive criticism 
can affect the game. And the thing is, if it does affect it in a positive way, the company benefits and the people who are creating the game benefits. So, so it's not necessarily a bad thing all the time, but showing up to a studio by way of a threat because you don't like, you know, what they did to a particular season of Call of Duty, you know, that's just insane, you know, because if anybody gets hurt, God forbid, then the game that you love is going to be affected because those individuals will not be able to produce or give their skill set to that particular title that you're complaining about. Makes no sense to me, but any final thoughts here? Well, where were we at? We're just, uh, we're at Jim. We went from <laughs> Jim Carrey. We're just we were going from, off on these things. We went from Jim Carrey to complaints and threats. Well, but we're still there in terms of like com- uh, how uh, people respond to some of the things that they see. Um, I, I think we're still there. Any other thoughts there? Yeah. Um, no, I'm good. But then it's funny because we're going to go into this one and it's still kind of. We're still, we're still in, still you know, there. we're still kind of there. 